Okay. Hello, everybody. Today we will start with the hormonal control of gametogenesis. Last time we talked about what is gametogenesis and spermatogenesis and oogenesis. Okay. Now these processes are actually controlled by um, hormones, which are released by the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland. We we'll talk about FSH first, follicle stimulating hormone. Often talked about or referred to as the female hormone. And this FSH activates the graphene follicle cells inside the ovary for oogenesis. Oogenesis, the production of uh, <clears throat> the production of a mature ovum or egg cell. So one primary egg cell undergoes two sets of divisions and finally forms one large ovum with half the number of chromosomes or half body and then three polar bodies. These are eliminated from the body later on. So this is the one which is produced in oogenesis. So that is initiated by the follicle stimulating hormone. Now the thing is, although it's called the female hormone, even the males have this hormone. Okay? And Follicle stimulating hormone actually stimulates the sertoli cells of uh, the seminiferous or seminiferous tubules. These are the sertoli cells inside the seminiferous tubule. So it activates the sertoli cells in order to uh, nurture the spermatids. Okay. So it's not exclusively female hormone. And then we have testosterone, which Again, it is called the male hormone. But uh, first, let's uh, talk about its function. It activates the Leydig cells to um, to secrete testosterone. I'm sorry, it's uh, interstitial cell stimulating hormone. This is the hormone which activates the Leydig cells in order to secrete testosterone and testosterone is an androgen meaning it's a male hormone and it produces male characteristics now we all know that there are certain instances where even women have a higher level of testosterone and they also behave some women behave like boys because of this uh, the imbalance in the secretion of testosterone. The point is this, testosterone is secreted in a female as well, although it's called a male hormone. So the point is, these are the hormones which actually control gametogenesis. Androgen or uh, testosterone helps in what is called spermatogenesis. It initiates spermatogenesis. Now, the Next, we'll move on to these three terms, spermatogenesis, spermiogenesis, and spermiation. They're very close and uh, it can cause confusion. Spermatogenesis is the production of spermatozoa. In short, just sperms. Okay. And spermiogenesis is the differentiation of spermatids into Okay, let's go to this seminiferous tubule. Here is a tube, cross section of it, and this is the diagram. Okay, this here, that's what we have here. This yellow band of cells, germ cells, they're the ones to divide to form what's known as the spermatogonium. Okay, or spermatogonia. Spermatogonia is the one that forms sperm cells. It divides to form spermatocytes, and spermatocytes divide eventually to form the haploid male gametes. So this is the spermatid. Okay. Now this spermatid embed, embeds itself in the Sertoli cells. These are the Sertoli cells. Okay. So there are four S's here: spermatogonia, spermatocyte, spermatids, and Sertoli cells. So spermatids embed the head into the Sertoli cells and they draw nutrient and nourishment from the Sertoli cells. Okay? 
So this change of a round cell into a well differentiated look at this diagram a round cell which is produced from a tail differentiating into a structure like this which has a, a head piece the middle piece and the tail middle piece is packed with mitochondria head has a large nucleus and acrosome so there is a major difference between the structure so here we have metamorphosis of spermatid into sperm cells so this change is known as spermiogenesis and uh, spermiation is we just said that the newly produced spermatids embed their head or the body into the sertoli cells in order to draw nutrients so there comes a time where the release of these cells from the Sertoli cells occurs. So this is known as spermiation. In other words, spermiation is the release of spermatozoa from the Sertoli cells into the seminiferous tubules. So we know now that the seminiferous tubules and the lumen, inside the lumen there are many sperm cells present and towards the periphery all of these uh, spermiation and uh, spermato spermiogenesis is occurring. Let me move on to this menstrual cycle. This is you know, in a 28 day cycle. Women produce one egg, mature it, and then it runs through the female reproductive tract. And we also know that the uterus prepares to receive. A fertilized egg. So this part which prepares to receive a fertilized egg is known as the endometrium. Okay. So this endometrium along with the mature egg cell if it's not fertilized, so that often is the case, if it's not fertilized it is eliminated out of the body along with blood. Okay. This process of getting rid of the unfertilized egg in a 28 day cycle is known as menstrual cycle. The next topic is difference between oysters and menstrual cycle. Menstrual cycle we just seen it occurs in a continuous breeders. Continuous in the sense between the age of uh, 13 to 45, from menarche to menopause. There's a age limit where a female can give birth. Okay, and unfertilized egg is eliminated with blood. So a menstrual cycle occurs for a long, uh, for a short period of time, and it also involves the elimination or the release of egg cell from the body along with blood. But in oyster cycle, if I, it occurs in seasonal breeders. The example of menstrual cycle is uh, one is apes, and the other is humans. Our closest cousins, apes. Then we go to oyster, oyster cycle. It occurs in seasonal breeders where the mature egg, if it's not fertilized, is not eliminated from the body along with blood. Okay, so this release of a menstruation does not occur in oysters uh, cycle. And the examples are dogs, cows. We know that they have a certain a breeding period where the female is receptive to the release of sperm cells okay, and it does not happen throughout the year there is a season for it and but the thing is the seasonal breeders can breed throughout the life they can breed throughout the lifetime menarch another term it, it is the onset or the beginning of menstruation. So approximately that's 13 years old okay, and onwards. Menopause is the end of menstru menstruation. That is around again 45 years or 50 years of age. Implantation it is the attachment of a fertilized egg which turns into a structure called blastocyst. It is the attachment of blastocysts on the walls of uterus. 